we've uh, reached the point where Allah Azza wa has created Adam. He has made him uh, give the names of all those things that Allah put in his mind. And we talked in the last session about the intelligence that Allah has given to the human being over the jinns and the fact that the human being has got everything in his brain, in his mind, whatever Allah wants him to know, he can make him know that. It's only that Allah contracts and he opens our minds whenever he wants. And everything in our lives, whatever we've learned, it's all inside that. And even things that we, don't, we have never even learned, Allah can choose to switch those cells on that we will, we will just know them automatically. Uh, and then we, we uh, depicted the uh, scenario where Iblis was told to bow down with the angels to Adam salam, and he decided not to. And then Allah Azza wa then starts a conversation with him. We also talked about the, the greatness of this sin and of this challenge because what had happened here is that Iblis wasn't challenging anyone else but challenging Allah Azza wa Jal and he was, great, he was talking to him directly. And the fact that Allah had ordered him, so it's an order from the highest of authority in existence and he is refusing to bow down. Now there's ghadab or there's anger here, there's anger in Iblis. Uh, there's also istikbar, which is that he's seeking to become greater. There's also this thing about uh, Iblis thinking that he is much higher. What, uh, and there's also jealousy. So these are some of the prime things. And we said in the last session that one of the biggest sins and the first sins, which most sins go back to, is this anania, which is when a person thinks that, you know, self selfishness, self-respect, self, self uh, sort of um, uh, consciousness, this, this leads to this, um, these sins. So he wanted a lot for himself and wasn't concentrating on the other. Now jealousy and jealousy is something which can make somebody blind to, to others. And what happens is you've got, to, you've got to understand because this sin then will, will re-emerge again in, in between the two sons of Adam. So that's one of the, again, and that will lead to killing, the first murder on the earth. So what happens is that a person is focused on himself or herself so much so to, to the extent that they, they feel deprived of another blessing which somebody else has got. And they feel that they should have deserved to get that other blessing that other creation of God has got. And it could be in anything. And in this case, it's Iblis that feels that the position Allah has given to this creation, he should have had that position. And what he had given um, uh, um, Adam in the open statement was that he's going to make him his Khalifa, which is that he's going to give him the reins of the earth, which would mean that from now until whenever Allah decides, this thing, this creature is going to become the one that has the greatest influence on the earth. And as we know today, we have got the greatest influence. Um, jinns have got an influence on this earth, but they're nowhere near us in terms of their influence. We are a lot more smarter and intelligent than them, though they are, you know, the, the mu'minin or the believing jinns are brothers. They are a lot more faster than us in terms of traveling. They have longer lives than us. They um, have got, you know, they're invisible, whereas we're visible. But in overall, we score a lot better than them. Now, what was going on in Greece is that he has made so much effort over this time. And suddenly he sees that Adam is the one that gets everything or a lot of things he's got without him even making an effort. It's just like Allah's just gifted him. Now, this is when jealousy really comes into play a lot. When a, when a person sees that, you know what, this guy suddenly just comes up and he, he's just suddenly got all this, why? Now the questions come, why? For example, if there's two businessmen, imagine there's two businessmen, one who's been established, imagine down in Turnback Lane, you've got one who's been established there for about 13 years. And I've seen this myself between businessmen and I've seen it on Turnpack Lane as well. So one's been established for about 20 years and he's doing sort of normal business. And he's going up and down and suddenly someone comes and he's taken one of the neighboring shops and he's selling the same thing as this person but he's making a lot of profit right he's making a lot of profit and he tears into the business of this one now okay fine you should you're supposed to sort of say that Allah you know he's 
He's given, you know, he's given this person now risk that he hasn't given me. That's supposed to end there. But what goes through the mind of this person is why? Why has he just suddenly dropped here? You know, sometimes even the price is the same. Sometimes his price and my price are equally the same. But people just end up going to him and they don't come to me. Now this sometimes Allah tests people. Sometimes Allah will test us with these things. So, you know, one of the cases that you find, you know, in one part of the Quran is... Um, when Allah decided to make it, make the people of the Sabbath, the people of the Sabbath, Allah decided to open, you know, He decided to send the fish on a Saturday because they were trying to play tricks with Allah. For whatever reason Allah has done this, you know, only Allah knows. And of course with Iblis, He had the wrong intention from the beginning. He shouldn't have, and He knew He shouldn't have done all of this for a return of a favor from God. True servants of God and true devout servants are those whom if Allah takes everything away from them, they still will say Alhamdulillah. And in a hadith it says that if you hear good news, you say Alhamdulillah. And if you hear bad news, you say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. So Alhamdulillah means praise to Allah and Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal means that on every single occasion of my life and in every single condition of my life, I say Alhamdulillah. So on the bad news, you're supposed to say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal, that I am praising Allah in every situation I'm in. So a true devout servant to God will not start complaining when he's lost one of the gifts of God. And this is one of the ways of Allah testing his true servants to see, well, you know what, what I'm going to do is that I'll take this away from you. Let me see how you react. And I'll take that from you and let me see how you react. And I'll take that from you and let me see. And I'll increase it with the people who are around you who are doing nothing. I'm just going to increase my favors onto them. And I'm going to see how you react. Are you going to now have jealousy creep into you? And sometimes if jealousy comes inside us, the, the, way, to, the way to kill your jealousy, right? The way to really kill your jealousy is to go to the person whom you're jealous of and to start to praise them or to start to say good things about them. Now that's a killer. <laughs> the person who's more intelligent than you, the person who's more, you know, for a, for a sister, it might be somebody who's more beautiful than her, to actually say good things about her, to honor her beauty. For a man to honor another man's, you know, financial status and say, mashallah, alhamdulillah, Allah is really good. In a nice way, in a nice way. You know, sometimes people can praise, but they mean something else. Allah knows all of that, whether you mean it, or you don't mean Allah knows that. So there's an ayah that I, that I read uh, just today, I think, um, was سَوَاءٌ مِّنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَرَّ الْقَوْلَ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ وَسَارِمُ مِنْهَا To Allah is the same whether you, you, you secretly keep your, you, you keep your secret to yourself or you make it apparent وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ بِاللَّيْلِ or you try and become really, really dis you know, discreet in the night and doing something, or you are in the openness of the day and you present it, doesn't matter which situation you're in, to Allah, all four situations are the same. To Allah, all four situations are the same. So when it comes to Iblis and you know what he was trying to do, Allah knew what was in his heart all this time. When it comes to a person praising somebody else or saying something good about them and saying, you know, mashallah, you know, Allah, Allah has praised you, or uh, you know, you're saying that barakallah fiqh, may Allah, you know, bless you with this thing. Um, Allah knows whether you're just saying it to just really, you know, make him feel good, or you're saying it like in a sense like, Barakallahu feek, you know, like, yeah, you know, Allah has gifted. You know, inside a person there's another, there's, a, there's an intention. Allah, Allah knows that intention. So that's one way to kill the jealousy off, is to actually, you know, show the show that this person really deserves what they've got. That is one of the reasons why Allah told Iblis to bow down to Adam alayhi salam. With the angels, because the angels are true devout servants of God. They're true devout creatures of God. So when Allah said, bow down, they bow down. You know, okay, Allah has created a new creation, didn't have anything from beforehand, and He knows all of this, He's got all of this preference over us. You know, we will bow down to this out of respect. But when Allah told Iblis to do it, the jealousy didn't allow Him, the kibr and the arrogance didn't allow Him. So as I said to you in the last session, there's three different parts of, of this, and you can read all of this. There's one in Surah Al-Islam Sa'd or Surah Al-A'raf. Right? And, and there's a passage right in the beginning about Iblis and Adam. There's another one in Surah uh, Al-Hijr, Al, um, which is the uh, 15th Surah of the Qur'an. And you'll find a passage again right in the beginning. Let's say a page into it, you'll find it. And Allah Azza wa Jal talks about the description between the two. And the last one is at the end of Surah Sa'd. 
And Allah again talks about the same, same incident. So here in Surah Sa'd, Allah says, Astakbarta am kunta min al Have you now sought to be greater or are you really deserving of that position? Do you really think that you are someone who's really high? Now either somebody, these, these are two different types of crimes. One is istikbar. Istikbar means that you think to yourself that you are greater than somebody else when you are really not. And the second one is that you have held yourself in esteem of a high position when you should be equal to others or when you should humble yourself. So Allah said, which one is it? Because uh, Allah Azawajal then said, he reminded him, he said, in Surah Sa'd, Allah says, I created this creation with my own two hands. And you're not going to bow down to it, Iblis? So Allah is reminding him that this is my own creation. I created you. I created this individual. To me, they're both the same. So I can give preference. You know, one of the ayats of the Quran says, you know, Allah can give to whoever he wants. Or يَرْحَمُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah can have His mercy on whoever He wants. يُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah can you know, punish whoever He wants. You know, these are ayats of the Qur'an. So يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah can forgive whoever He wants. So if Allah... And يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ Allah can open His risk for anyone He wants. He can close it on whoever He wants. And He can, he can restrain it on whoever He wants. So when Allah has said this, who are you, Iblis, to try and tell God who is greater than who? This, this, is, this is the... the um, the meaning what, what Allah is saying to him is that I've created him from my own two hands. It's like, he's the, I can do what I want. Who are you to say this? In Surah Al-Hijr, um, uh, Al Allah says, Li basharin, uh, Allah, Allah had already said that I'm going to create this human being. And then when Iblis finally, he says that I'm not going to bow down to this, to this uh, creature, Allah Azawajal then says, Qala, uh, he said, Ya Iblis, O Iblis, Malak, what's wrong with you? Allah tasjuda id amartuk. What's wrong with you that when I ordered you, when I ordered you to bow down, you didn't bow down? Now, here in each of the situations, he gives his reply, and his reply is quite rude to say the least. And he says, um, he says, you know, like, like I think I might have said last time, that you have created him from the earth and you have created me from fire. Now, as I said last time, that this qiyas, this analogy was a wrong thing for him to make. This qiyas, because, you know, for the reasons that I gave in the last one. But what I will say here is that Iblis not only gave reasoning to why he, did, why he thought he was greater, but he first asked Allah for respite. And he, he asked Allah for some extra time. So he says, and this is in Surah Isra, he says, لَإِنْ أَخَّرْتَنِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Or, you know, if you, if you actually give me some time till the Day of Judgment. The word Day of Judgment is him asking Allah first, would you allow me, O oh God, to live till the Day of Judgment? Now, of course, God or Allah Azza wa Jal, he knew what his intention was. So Iblis first sought from Allah, give me time till the Day of Judgment. Allah said, and according to Surah Hijr, Surah um, Sa'd and so on, Allah said, okay, ila yawmi, until the day that they are resurrected or until the day of judgment, I've given you this time to live. So now that Iblis got this word from God, because he knows that Allah will not go against his word. Now that he got this word from Allah, he then turns around in a rude manner and he says to Allah, he says several things. One of the things he says is that, he says, I am going to lead. I'm going to be the leader of taking all of his progeny, his children, all of Adam's children to the fire. Now, he didn't say Adam and his children. Now, subhanAllah, in this, there is a big evidence that Anbiya, the prophets, are those whom Allah has protected and they are masoom. There are people whom Allah has protected from sin. Shaitan knew that he could not make Adam السلام, become sinful. Now, how does Shaitan know all of this? How does he know the day of judgment? How does he know about the fact that, he's go that Adam السلام, is going to have a progeny? How does he know that? How does he know all of this? So there's a big debate in the, in the ulama of tafsir of how Iblis knows this. So one of the things is that he got to know this because of the jinn 
Anbiya, the, the prophets who were jinns who came to the earth before the creation of Adam alayhi salam. Remember, if, I, if, if you remember, I told you that there were a whole group of jinns, you know, hundreds and thousands, and whole, whole, you know, generations of jinns on the earth. And Iblis had been amongst them and he was the good one amongst them. And many messengers amongst the, mes amongst the jinns came to them and they were killed by other jinns. And from there, either he knew from what they had said, because obviously prophets, Allah reveals to the prophets the, the future sometimes. So, you know, whatever he wants to reveal, not all the future, but whatever bits and pieces of it he reveals, they would be able to say it. So either he knew from there or there is, there is some um, sort of, I wouldn't say strong narrations, but there's some weak narrations to suggest that Allah Azza wa Jal had given some of that knowledge onto the greatest of angels of what would come what would come about in the future like for example we've got we've got you know when jibreel alayhi salam when allah wants to say something to him that's going to happen he will reveal to jibreel uh, alayhi salam that jibreel alayhi salam will reveal to the hierarchy angels and they will reveal it to the to the lower angels and we know for example on laylatul qadr the lower angels of this heaven they will receive the orders from the higher angels and allah would have revealed it to them and that passes down now what used to happen is that when the when this uh, information or some information was revealed it would go pass down and some of the angels would have a conversation about it so some of them would be talking about it and iblis was obviously walking around and he was worshiping allah azza wa jal from amongst the ranks of the angels before he was cast outcasted so he possibly gained his this knowledge of what is going to happen from there or they say that some of these hierarchy angels, they had, um, you know, Allah Azza wa had given them access to some of the hidden treasures and the knowledges of the future. And some of them knew bits and pieces about it. And therefore from them, by staying amongst them, Iblis as well got some access to this information. Whatever the case is, Iblis definitely knew of certain events. He knew of the Day of Judgment. And therefore he asked to stay until the day of judgment, stay alive until the day of judgment. He also now knew that Adam was going to have a progeny. And he also knew that Adam would most probably be sent from this Jannah onto the dunya, onto the earth. So now having this knowledge, having this knowledge, his jealousy and his arrogance made him say that, Oh Allah, I am going to lead his progeny towards hellfire. Now, in Surah Al um, <clears throat> Surah Al Araf, what Iblis says is that I will go from. Uh, he'll come from different angles. So he says that I will come from. He says, "Mimbaini aidihim." I'm going to come from in front of them. Wamin khalfihim. I'm going to come from behind them. One Ayman, I'm going to come from their right side. One Shiman, I'm going to come from their left side. Wala tajidu aksarahum shakirin. You're not going to find, oh God, he's saying this to Allah, you're not going to find most of them grateful to you. Now, in this particular ayah in Surah Araf, what he's saying is that he's going to try from four different sides. In, in, this is the only place in the Quran that is mentioned that about Iblis coming from four sides. And there's a beautiful. Um, uh, dua of the Prophet sallallahu which is in a Sahih tradition that when the Maghrib time comes and when Fajr time comes there are a number of duas a person can, can read to try and stay from away from the shaitan. In fact, most of the a'mal that we do, most of the actions we do, half of them are just to keep ourselves away from the shaitan. Not half literally, but you know, many of them are. For example, and, and many of the duas are particularly. For example, you read the Quran, you'll say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. The first thing you'll say. You, you will go to the toilet, you'll say, Bismillah Allahu wa Ni'udhu Bikun al Khubuti wal Khabayt. Again, you're seeking refuge in Allah from the shaitan. You're eating, Bismillah. When you say Bismillah wa Barakatullah, why are you saying that? Is because you don't want the shaitan to eat with you, because the shaitan will eat with you. You're leaving your house, you're going to say, Bismillah wa Barakatullah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever will say this will be protected from the shaitan. If you you actually say that when you go out uh, of your door. You, when you come into your house, you say Bismillah, 
uh, and again, the ulama have written that this protects your house and you know uh, your house from the shaitan, from him entering your, your house. When you read Ayatul Kursi, you're saving yourself from the jinn or from the from iblis and from the devils and so on. When you're reading Mu'awwadatayn, Khuladribil Falaq, Nas, again, it's protection from the devil or from the snares of the devil, which has been mentioned in Surah, Surah An Nas. So many of these things are there for us to protect ourselves from the shaitan. And there's particularly Fajr and Maghrib. Why Fajr and Maghrib is because um, these are the two times when the angels are making their shift to the to the heavens, and these are also the times when the shayateen are trying to find their greatest influence as well on 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 um, uh, uh, the the human being. And maghrib has been mentioned in hadith, particularly where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Don't send your young children out, you know, uh, after maghrib." Because that's when there's a great sort of influence of shayateen that come out. And they get released at the time of Maghrib. Their duty starts at the time of Maghrib. And the other heavy influence they have is the time of Fajr. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has told us, you know, many du'as. Okay, many du'as. And one of the du'as is, if you can say this, uh, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhi wa yimitu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Many people know this du'a is one of the kalimas, you know, as they refer to. If you say this 10 times after Fajr and 10 times after Maghrib, you will get, you know, you'll get 10 rewards, you will get 10 different um, uh, sins forgiven, but you will also get the reward. Subhanallah, you know, you know, this is a big reward. Allah, Rasulullah SAW said, to free 10 children from the children of Ismail who would have been enslaved to actually free 10 of them, you know, to free a slave is several thousands of pounds. So it's actually like you are giving, like imagine freeing a slave is like 3,000 or 4,000 pounds. Times that by 10, you're actually giving 30 to 40,000 pounds fee sabilillah. And he said, mean wuldi Ismail. They are from the sons, imagine they are from the sons of Ismail alayhi salam, from his progeny, and they are from his bloodline, and they are enslaved and you are freeing them. Meaning, it is from the Alul Rasul, it is from the Prophet sallallahu own family, you are, you, are, you are freeing them. Right? And then he said, وَكَانَ لَهُ حِرْزٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah will also give him protection from the shaitan from the morning right till the evening. From the morning right till the evening. And if it's from at the evening, he mentions this, then it's from the evening right till the morning. This is one dua. And this is in Sahih Ahadith from Muslim, Sahih Muslim and so on. There's another one where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says, he says, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afiyata fi dunya wal akhirah oh allah i ask you for relief in the world in this world and next world allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal 'afiyata fi dini wa dunyaya oh allah in my worldly matters in my akhirah i'm asking you to give me forgiveness and to give me relief allahumma um uh, wa ahli wa mali and in my family and in my in my wealth allahumma astur 'awrati wa amin raw'ati Oh Allah, protect my fear, protect me from fears, and also cover my faults. Um, Allahumma, and this is the main dua I wanted to say against the dua of, of Iblis. Allahumma hafazni, oh Allah, protect me. Min bayni yadayya, from in front of me. Wa min khalfi, from behind me. Wa an yamini, from my right side. Wa an shimali, from my left side. وَمِنْ فَوْقِي from above me وَأَعُوذُ بِعَظَمَتِكَ أَنْ أُغْتَالَ مِنْ تَحْتِي and I seek your uh, I seek protection in the greatest greatness of your majestic qualities that I'm from from the fact that I may be taken over from from underneath from beneath right so when Iblis said that I'm going to attack the sons of Adam or the daughters of Adam when I'm going to attack them from four different sides Allah's Messenger sallallahu has given us a dua that you seek protection from six different sides. From front, from behind, from, from right, from left, from above, from, from, from beneath. Now this is just one of the things he said. Another one he said, he said, alayhim al-mustaqim. He said, from all your sirat al-mustaqim, your straight path of God, this is in Surah Al-Hijr, I'm going to sit in that road on their way to you or the straight path to you. What does that mean? That means that whenever you're going towards Allah Azza wa Jal, you are going to have waswasa. You know, some people say, I've become religious and now 
you know, I never used to feel like this, but I'm getting all these doubts and I'm getting, you know, I'm feeling this and I'm thinking of this and, you know, I'm not enjoying this and I'm feeling like giving this up. and All, all these things you are going to get. If you get that, you should take that as a sign of Iman. Because this is what Iblis said. Iblis said that if people are in your pathway, if they're coming towards you, I'm going to sit in between you and them. I'm going to try and you know, become, become someone who's an obstacle between you or Allah and, and, and between them. I'm going to become the obstacle. And he mentioned specifically Surat al-Mustaqim. What's Surat al-Mustaqim? Well, Surat al-Mustaqim is the life of all the Prophets. So if you're trying to mold your life to the life of the Prophets, if you're trying to mold your life according to the life of the Siddiqin, the truthful ones, if you're trying to mold your life according to the martyrs or the or Salihin, the, the righteous ones, then you are guaranteed that Shaitan is going to come to, towards you. In fact, what our Ustads and our teachers used to say is that a normal person will have one devil. Every person has got one devil assigned to him and he's also got one angel assigned to him. This is according to a Hadith. Right? But our teachers would say that the one who's seeking knowledge, because knowledge is the greatest danger to shaitan. Once you know what to do, that's the biggest danger, that's the first biggest danger. Second is you practice your knowledge. So first is going to make you try and not know what you're supposed to do. And second, if, he, if you know what to do, he's going to try and make you not practice what you should do. And third is that if you practice what you're doing, he's going to try and make you do that practice for other than Allah. These are three major things that Iblis has got. Number one is he wants to make people jahils. He wants to make them ignorant. Leave them without, you know, without studying Islam. Leave them without um, studying, studying the, the, the deen. Right? See, one of the, this is one of the ways he's going to become an obstacle. Number two is that they have learned properly what they're supposed to learn. But then he'll try and make excuses for them not to practice the knowledge that they have learned. And he'll try and delay, 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 procrastinate until they come to their death. Number three is if they actually do do that, do practice the true knowledge that they have they've known, he will try and put something into their minds that was for other than Allah. So he'll try and make them do riyah. He'll try and make them show, show their deeds to others. He might, might make them do it for a reason other than truly making Allah the prime reason why they're doing that action. So he's got three. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he summed it up when he gave his answer to him. He said, you will be able to, and this is the reason why I'm saying these three, because the only way you will get to the, to the last one, which is you will have ikhlas. So number one is ilm, knowledge. Number two is amal, practice. Number three is ikhlas, it's sincerity. The only way you will get sincerity is to have true knowledge, to have good action, and you, you're supposed to do it just for Allah's sake, you will become from the, those who have ikhlas. Allah said to Iblis, O oh Iblis, you will be able to influence whoever you want. Illa ibad. Allah, one, one is that Iblis says to Allah, I won't be able to um, influence your sincere servants. And Allah says to him as well, he says, yes, you will not be able to influence my sincere servants. Okay? Those who have got ikhlas. Now we're going to discuss a little bit about what ikhlas is, but I just want to say a few more things that Iblis actually said. And from this we can understand how he's going to try and take us away from Allah's pathway.